practical swords. I think Mike has been stuck in this little room by himself for just a bit too long because all of a sudden, contrary to pretty much, well, all previous experience and preferences, I, um, Mike's starting to think this might be something worth getting into. And he, uh, he did. And, uh, okay, so what have I done? All right, straight up up front, I have no intention of insulting, disrespecting any of you that enjoy, like, appreciate tactical swords. Maybe the main reason you clicked on this video. It's either that or you follow my channel and you want to know what the hell Mike got himself into this time. Or perhaps apparently like myself, you might be a little, shall we say, tactically sword curious. Well, how did I even get here? Well, as I kind of introduced, this is out of character for me. Why is it out of character? And it's only in this one specific area. In other kinds of weapons, or I'll use the term tools, I do appreciate the historic classic designs, both for the history and the aesthetics. They appeal to me. But I have certainly, in these particular kinds of tools, come to appreciate modern designs, you could arguably even call them perhaps tactical designs, for their toughness and utility. There are certain things that are definitely improvements. And then these tend to be the things that I use harder and also tend to carry with me more regularly, everyday carry sort of things, except for swords specifically. Now, I do have a couple of, of antiques, which I try not to use very hard anymore because I don't want to abuse them further. But obviously I've collected, you've been watching my videos, I've collected a lot of modern reproductions. Now, some of them do a better job at mimicking the historic models that they're based on, and some of them really, you know, they barely try. But at least they are a reasonable analog of those historic weapons for practice. I buy my swords not only for collecting, but actually primarily for using, for practicing, for training with. So I want swords that fit those classical systems so I can train with them and work on those techniques and, and explore those arts. And you're going to kind of see today the tactical swords often don't necessarily meet those criteria, or, or maybe they do. Maybe they meet other ones, and we'll talk about that a little bit today. Now, I've also talked about my history that I've started in, you know, in martial arts. I've been in martial arts for many, many decades. I started in the mid-70s. There was not a large selection of Japanese-style swords available back then. You kind of had to use what, what was there and deal with it or get an antique and, and be willing to risk beating it up a little bit. In that era, I think it was sometime in the 80s, somebody did produce what they sometimes called a tactical katana, which was basically just a slab of stainless steel. I think it actually had hollow ground edges. I'll try to, I'll try to do some research and find a picture of it, because I think they still do produce versions of it today that will be recognizable for what was available back then. Did not have a traditional scabbard, had a really basic guard, and the suka was just a couple of slab scales, either wood or, or some kind of uh, resin or laminate or something like that, screwed or riveted on, looked, looked a lot kind of like a messer in many ways. And I thought about getting one to just have a sword I could beat up, but I just could never bring myself to do it because it was so different than the traditional designs that not only I was training with, but had come to, to love, not only aesthetically, but in handling. Why am I here? Well, there's, there's a couple, three reasons I want to get out of the way to consider where we're going, and that's going to get into discussion of, of why I bought what I bought. First of all, yes, I am doing this crossover study. Where does Hema meet traditional Japanese and Chinese swordsmanship? And I'm thinking maybe some of these might help in that study, and I'll talk about that later. Also, kind of like some of the other tactical designs for tools, the more modern designs for tools, they could potentially be tougher in certain experiments I might have in mind. 
Another reason is they do tend to, in certain models, not so much, but the models I selected, they are shorter. We'll take a look at specs. Shorter than, well, a lot of similar swords, and I do tend to train a lot indoors, so having a shorter weapon that still has the weight and balance of a longer weapon could just simply be a nice training tool. We'll, we'll see about that. Um, the final thing is I recently did a video on the APOC butterfly swords. Uh, I didn't think I was going to like them, but I was impressed enough that I went to look at, well, okay, so what else is in the APOC line? So I basically came to two selections that really appealed to me, not only aesthetically, but functionally, and, and also that I felt like I could put to some, well, useful training practice. And those two models were the Cutlass and the Broadsword. Now, I decided on the Cutlass for various reasons that we'll talk about, and I found that best price, Chicago Knife Works. Now, some people have come down on Chicago Knife Works, including myself a little bit recently, because they used to do free shipping on anything over 100 bucks, and they decided not to if it was like sword length or even machete length. They decided that was oversized, and they were going to charge you shipping for it. Now, it turns out the shipping's not, not very high. I think I wound up to my area, I think I paid like $17 in shipping. And then given the price they gave me on it, they certainly beat everybody else's. It, it was certainly worth it. And their shipping was UPS. It was, it was pretty quick. It took a week. And then I was going to wait and see how I felt about it when I got it and do this little, you know, initial impressions and handling review and, and talk about the plans I might have for it before I bought another one. And then, well, Mike had a crappy week, and in the purpose, in, in the process of the crappy week, worked some extra hours and had some extra money and was really in dire need of some retail therapy. And lo and behold, Amazon decided to drop the price of the other one, the broadsword, by 30 bucks, which made it like way too tempting. And yeah, so now I have two. You'll see there's a box to open here. And the other thing, they, with the way shipping conspired, they both wound up on my porch at exactly the same time. Probably saved UPS a trip, so that's good. The other one came in this tube. So one's in a box, which is what my butterfly swords came in. And this one's in, this one is the, the cutlass, I think. I haven't opened it yet. So let me go open the tube quick and I'll give you my initial impressions. And then we'll talk a little bit about specs and handling and future plans. All right, it was packed in a nice sturdy cardboard tube that I'm probably going to turn into some kind of cool target, but no other padding than just the plastic bag it was in. And pulling it out of there, I'm immediately struck by how slim the whole thing is. Yeah, compared to the Saya on a Japanese-style sword, this thing is, almost feels kind of child size. It's really, really slim. One of the reasons I selected this was the curvature, the sori, is kind of similar to what I'm used to with a Japanese-style sword. So I figured in terms of crossover analogs, that would be really comfortable and familiar. It's got these belt loopy kind of things screwed onto it. It's some sort of plastic or fiberglass or something, I'm not sure. Um, and then there's these clips at the top that are wedged into the G10 scales, which are then secured with what look like three hex bolts and then there is a lanyard hole. Now on those butterfly swords I did immediately have to make some adjustments because there were a lot of sharp edges on where the metal was exposed and it was contacting my hand and also even the G10 scales had some sharp corners. Just picking this thing up initially it feels a lot better. There are some corners on it but the scales are pretty rounded, so it's, it's not uncomfortable. <sighs> Rattle, not, not much, right? Don't really hear any noise. Retention. All right, there's probably a trick that I've got to figure out to getting this out. And, um, huh. All right, let's try just brute force. Brute force worked, but... Oh, I don't know if you can. That is not a pleasant noise. 
Might be some gunk in there, might not be. I, I'm not sure. I guess I'll figure it out. All right, blade, blade, blade and feel. Okay, first time I'm looking at it. It's actually kind of nice. Now, I specifically picked this blade shape, one, because it appealed to me, similar to a Kogarasu Maru, similar to a, a European saber, or back sword. It does have a false edge on here. It's not sharp. It's probably a good millimeter or two thick. I suppose I could sharpen it if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that right now. Nice wide saber style fuller on there. Everything looks pretty nicely shaped and even and flat. Uh, not hollow ground, that is a saber ground, flat ground edge with a secondary bevel that's not too, it's not too crazy, but yeah, there's some definite gunk on this blade. It feels like uh, grease that has dried into sticky. And then it's picked up some grit probably from whatever it's rubbing against on the inside of, of this scabbard. You'll also see it's got a couple of hooks here that sort of serve as a guard, I guess. And then these indents, I suppose that could fit the thumb, but that's, I guess, where the retention on the scabbard lips is. So if I need to adjust it, I could carefully reshape those. And hey, I could, I could probably um, put a finger up over the top of it if I wanted to choke up. I was, I was thinking I might have a little bit, well, I guess I could get two hands on here. I'll get you the specs in a second. It's, it's not a long blade. It's more like a Wakazashi length sword. And it, I don't know, it feels pretty good. That's that's not bad. I would I would I would say that moves around really well. It's, it's solid. It feels thick. Has a nice thick spine. It uh, can't really tell if it has any distal taper to speak of. But yeah, it um, for what I am used to putting a sword to, that's not bad. That feels good. I could use that as, as any of a number of things, including, well, even some of the Filipino weapons I, I've dealt in. Another reason why I thought about this, the swords of this length, like I said, it could be wakazashi length, it could, could be cutlass or hanger or something like that length. But some of the swords favored in Filipino martial arts are about this long. So, quick look at sharpness. Now, granted, you could one could argue that paper cutting and such is not a tactical application of swords, and I will see in the future how it actually holds up to. I've seen people chop wood with these. Another reason why I got them is reviews I've seen, and there are not many, have focused on how tough these things are. They can take a lot of abuse. They're pretty solid. And from what the uh, butterfly swords have done, I would agree with that. But that's, well, a little, uh, a little inconsistent, which is what was the issue with the butterfly swords as well. All right, piece of cardboard. Um, one of the things that the butterfly swords did was the surface of them, when I tried to cut through cardboard, let out a really unpleasant screeching sound. Let's let's see if that's repeated here. Yeah, this is a little bit. I remedied that by just taking some 3M pads to it and buffing it out a bit, so I'm going to do that. But... Um, let me get the specs on it real quick, and we'll talk about some plans I might have. All right, a couple of surprises. First of all, I cleaned the gunk off the blade with some CLP, which smells like, you know, your usual gun solvent, uh, but something about the interaction between that and what was on the blade almost blinded me with this sudden blast of uh, vinegar smell and removed a lot of brown stuff, so I'm not sure if it was residual treatment with whatever coating this is, which I was assuming is a DLC, but it might be some other kind of coating. We'll see how it holds up, too. It's got a, a certain matte coarseness to it, but not, not overly so. But, well, just, just handling it to the scale and back and, and measuring a few things, I'm already starting to kind of appreciate how this feels. Um, the way that grip is kind of set up, if I rest my hands close to this guard, and yeah, I might be a wimp and round off a couple sharp edges. There's a nice little shelf of my thumb right there. So I, I kind of I kind of like that. I kind of like the way it fits in my hand. So I might not have to do too much in the way of adjustment to, to this particular sword. Speaking of which, weight, 2 pounds, 2 ounces. Now this is 9260 spring steel. 
which has a reputation for being very strong and resilient. Two pounds, two ounces makes this weigh as much as some of my lighter Uchigatana. So that's a great training analog. That gets it into the weight of, of you know, a lighter but full-sized sword. So that's good. Point of balance. Two and a half inches off the guard. Really close to the hand, which is, again, it's making it feel good, but it's still giving me, because it's so solid and stout, a really nice sense of blade presence. 22 inch blade measured from the hooks uh, 30 inches overall so you've got eight inches worth of grip which i suppose again you could probably get two hands on but my lower hand does run into that shelf there or maybe i could choke it down on it and give myself another four inches of blade length i don't know it increases my reach without actually without making that very uncomfortable at all so maybe that's that's why that's that way Thickness, um, it's it's an inch and a quarter wide this way at its widest point. And I, again, I was fooled. It does have a little bit of distal taper. It starts out at a quarter of an inch thick at the, the base in the back. And then just right before it drops off to that false edge, it reduces, well, a whole sixteenth of an inch. But there there's some that I can kind of feel as I run my fingers up that way. So there's just there's a bit of taper. Uh, back corners are, are quite sharp, you know, they're, they're not rounded, but then they don't really have to be. The hooks are definitely sharp. I might do just a little, little bit of rounding down here and on the scales. And again, maybe just kind of put a slightly smoother finish on the blade, might tune up the edge a little bit. I like, I like to put just a little bit of apple seating on these. But length, weight, balance, yeah, weight, feel. Um... I will put the link in the description below to it on Chicago Knife Works because I got it for, I think it was about $238, which was a hell of a sale over everybody else's offering. Uh, and UPS shipping, I think, cost me $17, $18. Bucks, and I got it in just a little over a week. Their customer service is, their service is still good. Their prices are still great. And they've got a, a selection. You can often find stuff there you can't find at other places. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna come down at Chicago Knife Works for having to give in a little bit to our current economic situation and, you know, make us eat a little bit more of the charge for shipping because you know everybody else does. So <laughs> it's certainly a lot cheaper than you know some of the things I've had to ship from China. Speaking of which, APOC it, it's part of the whole Cast Siberia line. So this was apparently made over in Dalian. So you've got that quality, and it has similar quality to those butterfly swords. Once I, I tune those up, I, I'm blown away. I didn't think I'd like them. Tactical swords, they're rough, they're not traditional, uh, but just, yeah, I could see where I could put this to some good use and uh, at least have something I could train with in a tight space and also potentially in experiments. Uh, be rather abusive with and not worry about. Is this something I'm going to carry as my everyday carry? No. <laughs> I'm not, Mike's not that far gone yet. He's not going to be carrying a sword around in public. Maybe, maybe the world will eventually get there the way it's going, but for now, um, all right, cut this one short and then I'll go ahead and, and do an unboxing video on the other one quick comparisons. I will spend a little time cleaning up and handling the two, come back and give you an update video. And until then, if you have any questions about this, I will try to answer them as I go. Love our conversations. Thanks for watching, following, subscribing, liking the videos, sharing the content, and I hope to see you back for, well, whatever's in that box.